If you or your son or grandson is accused of sexual assault in the military, I want to talk to you a little bit about what they might be facing, um, a little bit about the investigation process, how the government approaches the investigation, and the actual court martial itself. Uh, typically what you have is a alleged victim who makes an outcry. And the outcry is made either to someone in their command or to some investigating agency. What are the agencies out there? Well, it depends on your service. It's OSI, NCIS, CGIS if you're in the Coast Guard, or CID for the Army. What these agents do is they actually sit down with the alleged victim and they, and they start this rapport building stage. They start to get to know them a little bit. They're there for them. Want to, we're here to help you. You've been through a traumatic event. Uh, tell us your story. Now, these interviews last anywhere between six and ten hours. They're long interviews. And the other interesting thing is these interviews aren't taped. They're not videotaped. They're not audio taped. The only thing that you see at the end of these interviews is some sort of written statement made on behalf of the alleged victim or the investigator's notes. Either or, sometimes both. On the other hand, if you're the accused, or your son or grandson is the accused, they actually videotape his interrogation. Now, he has the option to invoke his rights, and he should. But most of my clients end up contracting with me after they've already made a statement. So by then it's too late. I have to deal with the statement itself. So after they've interviewed the alleged victim, then they go about doing an investigation. Many times the next person that they'll interview is any collateral witnesses that may have been near or at the actual scene or, or the incident, if it was a party or whatever it was. And then the last person they'll interview, of course, is the, the accused, the subject, your son, um, or you. So, how do they approach investigating you in particular? Well, it's interesting. When they sit down to question you, they do the same thing they did with the alleged victim. They build this rapport with you. They want to talk to you. They, if you're from Arizona, they'll ask you whether or not you like the Cardinals or not. Okay, something like that. And, you know, you've got brothers and sisters, and they'll really try to massage out you to make you feel good so that you, quote unquote, confess to whatever it is they think you did. Um, and agents will go as far as they can. They will lie. They will boldface lie to you about the facts that they have already gathered in the case. For instance, I had a client who was, um, was accused of sexual assault, and the NCIS agent had interviewed uh, a third party who saw what happened the day prior to interviewing my client. And this third party said, I observed consensual sex. He was like, oh, okay. So he interviews my client, and this is a videotaped interview. He says, well, we had a third party see what exactly happened. And they said it was rape. So you see, it's a bold-faced lie, and that's what these agents will do. They're not interested in getting to the truth. They're not interested in getting the facts. They're interested in convicting you and putting you in jail. Now, when it comes to a charging decision, well, they're going to charge you with rape. They're going to charge you with sexual assault. And they don't care how bad the alleged victim even looks like. They don't care that the alleged victim is promiscuous. They don't care that the alleged victim commits adultery. They don't care that the alleged victim is a drug user. They don't care about any of these things. They don't care that the alleged victim is on record lying. Lying in sworn statements. Lying in uh, sworn hearings. Article 32. So I had, I've had victims lie at the Article 32. I've had victims lie in the actual court martial. In the court martial. I had a case recently where the, where the alleged victim said that she didn't have sex with her boyfriend until right before she submitted herself for a sexual assault nurse examination. The DNA evidence showed that she had sex with her boyfriend not three hours after she was allegedly raped. How ridiculous is that? 
And yet the government moved forward on the case. Well, why did they move forward on the case? Because they had they had a victim who had a story, and the victim didn't recant. So they moved forward with the court martial. And that's how that's, what, that's how the government chooses to do business. And there's a lot of congressional scrutiny on on the government right now. There's a lot of congressional scrutiny on military prosecutions of sexual assault. So and instead of actually being judicious in how they conduct the prosecutions and investigations of sexual assault, they just prosecute everything. That's what I'm seeing. What does that mean for you? What does that do for your quality of life? Well, if you don't have an experienced defense counsel working with you to defend you, you could potentially get convicted. You know, and what happens? Well, first of all, it's a felony conviction. Second of all, it's a sex offender registration for the rest of your life. That means if you have children, you don't get to go to Little League. You don't get to go to Pop Warner. If you're trying to get a good paying job after you've served your time and paid your quote unquote debt to society, good luck. Your honor and your integrity is at stake. In the government, the military, the service that you signed up for said, I'm gonna lay my life down for my country. They don't care about that anymore. Because now you're accused of a crime. You're accused of sexual assault. And the way they're approaching these investigations, they really don't care about you anymore. You're just another number to them. So you need to consider that. As you approach, and as you determine what your defense is going to be when it comes to sexual assault in the military. So if you have further questions, pick up the phone, give me a call, it's at the bottom of the screen. Shoot me an email. I'm there. Answer any questions that you have. Appreciate your time. Thank you.